Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about fish oil, or EPA DHA. Is it good for us, or is it bad for us? Let's go into some of the details, the sourcing of omega-3s, and the dosages that you should take, and some of the controversies that surround fish oil. So let's go into some of the details. So when we think about fish oil, it's omega-3 fatty acids. It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid, and it's important for lipid mediating, as well as an anti-inflammatory. So, food sources is the liver of lean fish, particularly cod, or you have tissues of oily fish like herring, mackerel, salmon, uh, sardines, tuna, and more recently it's krill oil, and then you could also get from algae, right? So. Let's go and talk about that. So EPA and DHA is synthesized by algae that are consumed by the fish. So fish don't naturally come with fish oil. They eat algae or it's in the environment and the algae is what produces the EPA, DHA or the omega-3s. So in the main uses, it's cardiometabolic, right? Cardiovascular issues and so forth. Cognition or brain function inflammation and pain, so joint pain and those types of things. So if it's good for inflammation, it's also good for, let's say, skin conditions that are inflammatory, right? Neurological disorders, same thing. You need um, fish oil in order to make cells healthier because every cell in our body um, has a phospholipid bilayer. What that means is that you need oils or fish oils or uh, some sort of oil that can create that phospholipid bilayer. So fish oil is one of them. So it's going to impact neurological disorders. And it, one is that it's important for cellular function, but also decreases inflammation. It also works for prenatals and also psychological conditions, right? Bioavailability. Now this is kind of wide and it's not set. But it depends on the chemical bonds of the lipid structure, meaning how is it formed, and then the emulsification technology that's used to make it. And also, are you eating a fatty meal with it, right? If you're eating something that's fatty along with fish oil, maybe the absorption can be uh, better. Also, gallbladder function, right? Because gallbladder and the bile salts emulsify the fats. So if you had your gallbladder removed, you're not going to digest your fats very well. So it's important to support the gallbladder, uh, whether you had it removed, or if you have a sluggish gallbladder that's not functioning at its optimal. So let's go into some of the other features of it. Now, again, fish oil comes in a variety of different forms, right? So the bioavailability from the highest to lowest is listed here. Krill oil bound to phospholipids, right? And then it's processed fish oil that's re-estified to triglyceride bound, okay? Natural fish oil or alga oil, which is algae, it's a natural triglyceride bound. And then natural fish oil that's free fatty acid form. And then it's processed fish oil, with, which is the uh, ethyl ester bound fish oil. This right here is used within the pharmaceutical company where they make ethyl ester bound fish oil because they can patent it, right? So if you look at the bioavailability though, it's really low on the list. Now there are risks, adverse risks. So there are concerns about uh, increased bleeding with fish oils, right? Because it could thin down the blood. In actuality, the risk of bleeding is not founded in the studies, right? The studies don't really show that increase is bleeding. So that's a misnomer. And then the, the possibility of toxins or PCBs in the fish, right, that's being processed. Good companies or high quality companies or manufacturing processes eliminate a lot of these concerns. So uh, in terms of adverse risk, there's really not a lot. Uh, you can probably increase the dosage of what's recommended on a daily basis. So let's go into some of the concerns, right? If you don't have a gallbladder, 
or if your gallbladder is not functioning at its optimal, then you need to support that gallbladder. There's also a question of oxidation of the fish oil. Is the fish oil rancid? Is it not good because it's already oxidized? Well, it really depends on the manufacturer and how they process it. So a lot of the higher quality manufacturers like Nordic Naturals or um, Pure Encapsulations or Biotic Research, they, they test it or third tar uh, party test it, everything to make sure that it's of high quality, right? So some of the studies have shown um, on the opposite side that, oh, it doesn't have the cardiovascular effects, right, that people think about. But in actuality, it does. And the way it really has a cardiovascular effect is that it has anti-inflammatory, which is good for the heart, and blood vessels, and it also reduces insulin uh, resistance, meaning the blood sugar management is better when you're on fish oil. So that cardiovascular concern is, is worthwhile discussing, but in my opinion, uh, there is a benefit there, okay? Dosages. When we take fish oil or omega-3s, when you look at the bottle and it says 2,000 milligrams of fish oil or omega-3s, that's not what we want. What we want is EPA, DHA levels above 2,000 for dosaging. So let's say just a regular kid can take up to about 2,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA. Adolescents can go to two to 3,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA. And adults can go anywhere from four to 5,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA. Not just omega-3, right? Because there's other things in there. It's not just EPA, DHA. What we want is this, EPA, DHA, okay? EPA is great for generalized inflammation and function. DHA is really good for brain. So if you look at formulation where you have really high DHA, it's gonna be more expensive, okay? My best recommendation for you is to go for the natural triglyceride form. So we're gonna go natural fish oil or alga oil, natural triglyceride uh, bound. That's what I would recommend. Now there's, no, no, there's nothing bad to say about krill oil or, or where it's re-esterified, but that's just another step. We like to just go natural and they do natural fish oil or algal oil. Now, for vegetarians, it, it makes sense, right? When you need more fish oil, uh, one way we can do it is from algae, okay? So when we look at this in this uh, pecking order, uh, believe it or not, I kind of picked the middle one. I think that's uh, a better form. And when you look at dosaging, it's much higher than what's thought of as beneficial. So above 2,000 milligrams of EPA, DHA would be best. And obviously you wanna to talk to your physician about uh, taking fish oil uh, with concerns about other medications and so forth, okay? Today we're gonna to talk about fish oil, in particular DHA. So let's get right into this video. In fish oil, there's a component called DHA. It's called docosohexanoic acid. It's known to help improve cholesterol, improve hypertension, improve cognitive function. More importantly, it's very important for fetal, infant, and childhood development, okay? So what is DHA? DHA is a omega-3 fatty acid. The other component for this omega-3 fatty acid is EPA. But DHA is essential for structural components of the cell membrane. What that means is that it's very important for your cells to function and the structure of the cells. E DHA is very high in the brain and in the retina. So it's very important for cognitive function, brain development, right? Especially with the eyes too, because it's found in the retina. ALA, found in chia seeds, flaxseed, and walnuts, etc can convert to DHA. However, the process is slow, it's multi-step, and only about 0.5 to 9% will convert from ALA to DHA. So oftentimes the diet is deficient in ALA as well as deficient in DHA. Sources, salmon, farmed, 
1.24 grams per three ounces. Salmon, wild, 1.22 grams per three ounces. Sardines, 0.74 grams and mackerel 0.59 grams. I'll give you a list of other uh, foods that have um, DHA uh, in the description below. But if you look at farm, it actually has a slightly more than wild. And it's likely because of the feed, but farmed uh, fish has its own problems, so I would avoid that. Definitely go with the wild. You can find DHA in alga oil, krill oil, cod liver oil or fish oil you can do there are different levels of dha in these uh, different types of sources some will have higher levels versus lower levels so it's important to look at the labeling of each of the oils so if it says omegas and it has like 2000 on the label on the front you have to flip to the back and look at the component of epa and dha so the higher DHA is better for neurodevelopment and cognitive function. So when we look at this, we like to see levels closer to about 1,000 to have a therapeutic benefit. 1,000 milligrams of DHA to have positive benefits for neurocognitive development, okay? Now, studies have been shown for hypertension, lipid profile, Alzheimer's dementia, it also helps improve memory, fetal development, and neurodevelopment. So I'll link the studies below. Some of the studies are really good, some are not, but um, in terms of nutritional studies, it's often difficult to have uh, controlled, double-blind, placebo studies on nutrition. Oftentimes, supplements work as synergists. So if you take one supplement, if you took another, it would improve the outcome but oftentimes they're doing single nutrient testing and, and some of the uh, limitation with these double blind studies are out there um, in terms of how nutrition will actually work for a individual. Now, there's been some issues with um, small percentages with atrial fibrillation with fish oil. So you wanna talk to your doctor or your cardiologist about it. Um, they are minor uh, in terms of percentage wise, but there it, it is, uh, some incidents out there. So, all right. So my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.